Good morning and welcome to video 3 of our bridge build series. So if you watched our previous video you would have seen me build footings on either side of our pond here in preparation for our new bridge. Uh, so if you missed that video there is a link up in the top corner for it. Now since the previous video there has been a slight change in as much as I have put some concrete slabs down on either side and I have raised the water level of the pond just because I wasn't entirely happy with the footings as they were. Um, but that is all now ready for me to build a bridge on so let's go get some timber. Okay, well that's all the timber up, and if it looks like an excessive amount, that's kind of because it is. Uh, that's for a couple of reasons. First of all, I was expecting there to be some sort of footings here already that I was having to work from. So obviously, where I've built these footings in, I have made the bridge slightly shorter. So that was calculated for the full length bridge, and I'm working on a slightly shorter bridge. Uh, the other thing is I'm making the bridge stronger, so it used to have three beams going across underneath it. I'm now having four beams going across underneath it. Although three beams would take your weight, with the four beams it means you're more likely to be stood directly over a beam when you walk on the bridge. Uh, so with the design of the bridge, I have changed that slightly as well. Previously they did it as beams from either end of the same length, and then that had a straight join in the middle. Now obviously that creates a weak point in the middle. My plan for here is to stagger the joints, so I'll have a long beam from this side joining a short beam from that side, and then the next one over will be a long beam from that side joining a short beam from this side. So that your joints should be staggered and that should make the bridge stronger. I'm still going to put posts in here to support the beams anyway, so it's not entirely necessary, but it's just nice having that extra level of security. Now obviously the best way to do this would be to build it on dry land here and then with a few of us lift it into position. Unfortunately there's not a few of us here, there's just me, and I won't be able to lift the weight of all of that all on my own. Uh, so plan is if I go through these timbers I'm going to select the nicest ones here and I'm going to use those as the main beams. Anything that I think is a little rougher, those are the ones that I'm going to cut up to make the spacers and dividers between the beams. Uh, so I'll cut everything ready to size and then lay out things in position, balancing them as best I can over the water and then I'm just going to have to build it in situ. So it's going to be fun. Um, but yeah, so I'll cut everything to size off camera and I'll pick it up again in a minute when I'm laying stuff out. Right, well I've cut a couple of blocks to size. I still need to cut more, but I'm not 100% confident on the dimensions of the bridge. Uh, I'm sure it'll be fine, but I just want to get a couple of beams in place so I can be happy and certain that it's all correct. So uh, that should be enough for me to get the main beams in and then I can carry on from there. So I've put a layer of plastic down over the concrete slabs because obviously concrete absorbs water and I don't want that wicking up into the bridge. Uh, so that should be fine to build from now. So I'm going to have to somehow carefully place these beams in place without getting them too wet, drill holes in them, screw them all in position while standing in the middle of that, not sinking into the mud. This is going to be fun. Uh, right, let's get on. This is getting off to a flying start. So I have already rounded the screwdriver into my finger, realised the plastic's blown out at the far end, and also realised that these beams need to be cut down by four and a half centimetres for it to all work properly. So I'm going to take this apart and start again.
Well, that's starting to look like a bridge. In fact, that is now a self-supporting structure that should be able to take my weight in the middle. Now, obviously there's still more beams, more posts and more structure in general to add to this. Uh, so I am really pleased with the fact that that will take my weight. Uh, now I've double checked the measurement and I'm half a centimeter off of what I wanted to be. So I am really pleased with that. So I'm going to carry on cutting some blocking up and get this finished. Okay, well that's the last of the blocking in. So that means not only can the beams not twist at all, it also ties each beam to the one next to it. So if you put pressure onto one beam, it transfers that load onto the other beams either side of it as well. So that means the beams in the centre here are the strongest beams and obviously that's where you're going to be walking. Now the weakest part on this bridge is going to be that joint there. Now obviously the beams here are tied into the blocks, so that beams into that block. Uh, I've also put extra screws through going at diagonal so that beam is tied to that block and that beam is tied to that block so that's all crisscrossed and once I put the handrails on the panelling that makes up the handrails will also add structure to that so this bridge is going nowhere now I don't know who said it but there was somebody who once said 
anyone can build a bridge. It takes an engineer to build a bridge that barely stands. Well, I'm not an engineer, so I'm certainly going belt and braces on this. I would be happy to say that this bridge would support your weight as it is. But as I can put posts in here, I'm going to put posts in here. I am making sure that this bridge goes nowhere. Great, well that's the post in and secure. So with my experience of building this footing here, I found that when I put posts in down here, I hit quite a few rocks. So I assumed that this end was a bit more rocky than that end. So I decided to use a slightly shorter post at this end and slightly longer post at that end. Obviously with the posts, I found it was the other way around. These ones went down to their full length, whereas the ones at that end down there hit something incredibly hard and just stopped moving. So uh, I'm happy both sets of posts are secure. Uh, ones at that end obviously need trimming down so they're just below the height of the beams so I can get the decking over there. But as you walk on this now there is absolutely no movement to it at all. There's no bounce in it, there's no sideways movement so this is incredibly strong and as I continue building it it's only going to get stronger. Now obviously I've still got those two beams over there that I didn't need so they're going to go up to the shed. They will be helpful in the future. Um, but yeah so next video is going to be hopefully getting the uprights in for the handrail and getting the deck on here. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. Um, but yeah, I'm going to spend some time tidying up because it's getting wet, it's getting dark. So again, this video here, I hope you enjoyed it and I shall see you later.